prioritize and execute. Prioritize and execute is uh, something that I have come across uh, that has uh, been helping me tremendously. Um, and I learned about this from, uh, a st it actually was a podcast. I came across this podcast by um, a gentleman by the name of Jocko Willink. And Jocko Willink is an ex-Navy SEAL commander. Uh, and him and uh, one of his friends, they run a company where they go into Fortune 500 companies, big companies, and they work with um, upper, lower management, CEOs, um, to figure out why the company is failing or why the company is not doing as well um, as they want. And uh, when I first heard about this, I thought, well, what does a Navy SEAL have? Well, how can a Navy SEAL help uh, with uh, captains of industry uh, or, um, uh, or me, uh, as far as that goes? And what they found, um, in all of the um, uh, uh, complexities of war uh, in combat uh, is a lot of lessons learned on, on how to manage resources, how to manage people, and how to manage prioritize. prioritize. And so that's where I came up with this, uh, or where I first was exposed to this, um, this prioritize and execute. So I was listening to his Jocko's podcast, and then I realized that he'd written a book, and the name of the book is Extreme Own Ownership, and that was written by him and his friend Leif Babin. And there's a chapter in there, I think it's the eighth chapter, uh, that, that is titled Prioritize and Execute. And what they, uh, what they kind of talk about that in that is that um, in the overwhelming, uh, in the fog of war, I guess, or in the overwhelming uh, of number of responsibilities and rapidly changing situations, what they were what what they were finding was that um, these young Navy SEAL commanders were trying to to do too much and trying to take on too much responsibility, and the effect was well, essentially they were ineffective. They were not able to manage uh, all of the problems that were coming at them. And I have ran into this as, as well, and I think that it's coming from the same place in the wildland firefighting ground. What I've been taught and what I've learned to be absolutely true is, is something that we call span of control. And span of control is how many people can, can one person actually manage? Because if you're trying to manage 100 or 50 or 25 people, what ends up happening is you don't end up managing anyone. So what the experts have determined and found out that most people in most situations, what the ideal is, is that you can manage between three and five people effectively. When you start going outside of that, it becomes too much. The person just doesn't have the, the cognitive ability uh, to deal with the complexities uh, that come from these multiple things. So Jocko talks about, uh, so I want to get into um, this idea and how I've uh, um, implemented it uh, into my life and, and I want to tell you how that's changed things uh, in the last five days that I've done this. So this prioritize and execute, how, what that means to me is that as the day starts, um, now we're talking about um, all of the unfinished projects we have around our homes or, or ranches or farms. Um, all when you start looking at the big picture, and let's say that there is a hundred or five hundred things that need do, doing, um, and you you try to attack those things, uh, what ends up happening is that um, you're you're exceeding that span of control. You start to, you do a little over here, then you do a little over there, and and then you kind of get frustrated, and you look around, and then you start getting overwhelmed by the the number of things that need doing. So what I have done is I have implemented this prioritize and execute that I learned from Jocko's book uh, into these tasks. So how does it, what does that look like? Well, it looks, it, for me, it starts with lists right here. So the first thing in the morning, I have my coffee and I sit down at my desk and I think about, okay, what are my priorities for the day? What are the, what are the, the most pressing things that need doing? And I write them down. And I make sure that I only select, uh, I, I'm realistic with this list, that, that I don't try to schedule more than I can actually do because then it becomes discouraging. So be realistic about it. How much time do you have? What can you fit in that time? So I list my priorities. And for me, that takes usually about three things. And then I write them all down. Priority number one, priority number two, priority number three for that day. Okay, so that's my priority. So how, what do I need to execute this? So what I end up doing is I start thinking, okay, let's look at equipment or supplies. What am I going to need to do? Let's say we need to paint the front door of the house, okay? 
that is priority number one. Uh, what do we need to do to execute this? Well, we need to have sandpaper. We need to have scrapers. We need to have a paint. We need to have wire brushes. We need to have drop cloths, all of those things. Okay, so before we execute this, we go into these lists. I'm gonna need the paint. I'm gonna need the stuff. Uh, so we gather the things. So the first thing that I do is I start gathering all the equipment, lay it all out. I think about the job in my, in my head. Do I have all the things do I, do I need? Are the batteries recharged in the cordless drill that I may be using to mix the paint? Um, is the razor knife changed in the in the tool if, in case I need to cut plastic for drop cloth or paper? Is there a masking tape? Is there this and that? And I'm, I go over that whole equipment list until I'm satisfied, yes, check that off. I have the things that I need uh, to make that happen. And then you uh, tackle the job. What's been really helpful to me is that um, uh, I have been working through these projects, uh, projects, and I'll show you what I did yesterday, uh, very seamlessly with a very with a lack of uh, uh, without having a ton of frustration that comes from not being prepared. You just settle in, and and man, you're excited to get this project done, and you've got the time set aside, and you grab your cordless drill, and it's got the wrong bit in it, or the battery's dead. That's very frustrating, and that really eats away and takes up a lot of time from the progress. So it's really, to the execution part of it's really important to make sure that those things are laid out and that you're ready to, to go. Then you can move on into it. And the thing that has helped me with this list is it's also cut down on the frustration. So let's say that the priority number one is to, is to paint the front door and you're going back and forth and, and you're doing your job and, and then your eye catches something else that needs doing. Oh, and you're thinking, well, I need to do that. And then you start trying to multitask and multitasking, just like a multi-tool, is not very good. It doesn't work very well uh, and you don't e e end up really getting much done. So what the, the list does is you have to ask yourself that question is when you are about to get distracted from your priority, you look, pull out the list. Well, is this is this little thing over here that is asking for my attention? Is it on my list? No, it is not today's priority. Therefore, it's don't worry about it. That's maybe maybe that's tomorrow's list. Maybe it's a week away. And so you stay focused on it and you work through that. Now you just keep hammering away on this and you don't get distracted. You don't do anything else until this project is done. Even go so far on your list as put putting the cleanup. So you're putting things away because what I find. It is that the reason why our shops and our garages get completely disaster uh, uh, or um, out of uh, out of order, and, and it seems like you just spend the weekend cleaning something up, and then three weeks later it's a disaster again, is because we don't put things away at the end of jobs. You think, and I think that just because I finished the project, I changed the oil on my tractor, uh, that I'm done with that project. But you're not done with it because you just left uh, four quarts of oil in a pan, uh, and your wrenches out, and a bunch of rags. And and the empty oil containers are sitting on the bench. Well, when you do project after project after project, those things multiply, um, and then that's what happens to your shop. So the the you don't do not move on to priority number two until priority number one is done 100%. We started it. We've identified it. We've got the resources that we need to do it. We do it, and then the finish up is the cleanup and the final everything done, put away in its place. Then we move on to number two. And I'll tell you just. I'll just, just to wrap this up, how that's really helped me is that I have been, I've had, I've made pretty ambitious lists and I've worked really hard to complete them. And at the end of the day where I used to feel discouraged because the lack of project pro progress that I had uh, because of the myriads of tasks that I needed, um, I had peace because I knew that I had worked through my list. I had accomplished the priorities that I had set for myself for the day and that I could then enjoy family time or do something guilt-free. And, and if something was bothering me, it's like, well, that's gonna have to wait. It's gonna go on its next list and then you're working your way through it. So it's been really, really fascinating uh, to keep these. And I've been keeping all these for the whole week in my pocket, uh, in my tool belt, uh, going through them. And if I don't get to the priority, then it jumps forward uh, to the next day. If I only get through two, then three is at the head of the list on the next time. Also, the thing that's really been helpful is having this paper when things come to mind that, well, I can't accomplish this because I don't have masking tape. Well, you, you write that right on there and you make yourself a little list on this. And so when you do go to, if, or you need to send someone to, to Home Depot or to the parts, parts store or whatever, you have don't have to go off memory. Now, what was it that I needed to get? Uh, you wrote it down here and then you could move on and you have an actual shopping list uh, right here uh, that's very helpful. So uh, I'll show you the priors that, that I identified yesterday Day, uh, how I worked through them, what I got accomplished, and uh, yeah, and then we'll wrap it up.
before I share the projects, I wanted to show you my uh, the the command structure. <laughs> I mean, I, I've really adopted. Uh, I'm really serious about this, and I've really adopted uh, the, the the principles. I guess the policies that the military uses um, because they're good at it. You know, they're good at uh, figuring this stuff out, and it's helped me a lot. So my first thing is I was setting these priority lists, and I was having difficulty with them because I couldn't or I couldn't uh, finish finish number one because I couldn't find my tools. So priority number one for me came uh, to set up the tools and so and to get organized. And I spent actually a whole day on that uh, in organization. So I had lots to do. So I had uh, plumbing, I had electrical, I had drywall, I had um, uh, painting, I had uh, trim, finished carpentry, I had on and on and on. Um, uh, so I needed a lot of things. So I had to get organized. So that meant uh, electrical, carpentry, and paint. Uh, getting myself a workstation set up here and and so I knew I thought about all the things I have to do and I need to do trim work so I set up the chop saws and uh, also thinking about you know my cleanup and how to make that easier so little simple things like putting a five gallon bucket there to the right to catch all the scraps so I'm not picking them up off the ground I can take them and dump them in the burn pile at once also set up the table saw I needed that for some trim work to rip down some some one by material and also, when I grab a saw, for example, is the blade sharp? Is the battery plugged in? Are the hearing, do I have hearing protection ready? Are my safety glasses all ready? Are the side wings extended so I don't have to be, ha is it ready to go 100%? Yes. Then I moved on to the next priority, which was the table saw. Uh, is it have a blade? Is it the right blade? Does it have the batteries in it? So on and so forth. Once that's set up, I move on to the next one. And then we had the carpentry box and all the hand tools and is the extension cord plugged in and are all of the batteries charged and do I have the bits that I need? And when I had that, then I moved on here and do I have my drywall and all all of those things. I even went so far as to, I knew I was going to be using a lot of lumber and materials to put the forks on the tractor and load all of the 2x6 and 2x4s and the 1x4s and all the trim that I could potentially need and had them right there uh, where I could grab them frustration free. So, you know, this is maybe a bit excessive for a small job, uh, but for a major job where I had so many things going on, it was worth it to take the day and have everything set up. And I've been able to work here and work through all this stuff and to have very minimal frustration and be able to find the things that I need to accomplish the job. So I just wanted to share with you just an example of, of what I accomplished and kind of how I worked through it. So when I went through priorities, what was my number one priority? Well, it was, of course, to fix the steps that Mrs. W had rotted out and that she had, had almost fallen down. So that became n number one. So set everything up and I got the steps worked out. Number two on my priority list was to, um, I need, wanted to key all the doors alike. You know, we had, uh, we have a whole bunch of doors and when we uh, got the house, it has like four different keys and it's always been kind of a, of a, of a frustration for years and years, you know, that we, when we have a house sitter, it's like, which key do you give them? It's very confusing. And let's say you, you want to come in one of the back doors and you, and you don't have the key. So it was, that became a priority for me because I'm looking for things to, to relax or to relieve some of the aggravation and to make life as easy as possible. And, it, and I'd been putting it off forever. So I took the time and I keyed all of the doors like so one key opens everything in the house and the last thing was uh, to uh, install a sensor light uh, on the back of the house off of my office we had this here I'll take you over there so as I was saying we when we bought the house there was a uh, exposed wires here and every time I came in and out of the office I looked at that and, you know it was one of those things it's like oh I need to do that need to do that well it's done now I put it on my list so when you're making your list make sure uh, that you, you you take on an ambitious project but you give yourself a simple one too so you get a little bit of traction you know something that you could like go tighten a screw or put some oil on a squeaky latch you know put a couple of those in there kind of helps give you a little bit of mo gives you a little momentum and some traction also, um, our lovely wives um, will drop hint, hints to us, and, and uh, how many times have they asked us, hey, could you, could you fix my dryer, could you do this, and you're thinking, well, you know, I mean, I got more important things to do, and you put it off, put it off, put it off. You know, to them, um, I, I believe that that, um, uh, it, it's not so much the fact that you, uh, that you actually fix the particular thing, but you, uh, it, you made it a priori priority and it was important enough for you uh, to do it for them because it was important to them. And I think that that's a way you can say that I love you and, and to build trust and endearment um, from our women. Um, and so try to, when you're making your list, try to make sure that you are, are speaking with your spouse and what are her concerns and what are the things that she would like to be taken care of and make sure you add one of those too. Maybe you do two for what you think need done and make sure you get something that, that she, you know, that will help her make her life a little bit easier as well. Uh, this is really exciting and I've done it for, uh, 
about five days in a row now and I've just got so many things accomplished. So uh, I would highly recommend uh, this book. I'm going to put it, I'll put it in my um, Amazon store, wranglermart.com. It's called Extreme Ownership. It's made, uh, written by Jocko Willink and uh, Leif Babin. And it's a very interesting, it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of uh, anecdotes from um, his experience in um, Iraq uh, as a combat uh, Navy SEAL commander um, and how that applies to us today. I, I, I would love to be on his podcast. Uh, I sent him an email and, and I, I, you know, I mean, he has some pretty, uh, pretty incredible distinguished uh, guests on there. Um, don't know that I'd fit that category, but I would like to talk to him about um, how this, this idea of extreme ownership and how this idea of prioritize and execute can also be so valuable for the common guy. You don't necessarily, it's not just, it doesn't just necessarily work for um, a Fortune 500 company, but we could scale this down and use this principle for you and for me and, and for, for those of us that, that are really overwhelmed and, and trying to uh, get control of our life and, and to be better husbands and fathers and better better managers of our of our resources and, and money and, and such. So um, I highly recommend it. So I'll put it there. I'll also put a link to his podcast. It's a very, very good. It's one of the very best ones out there. Um, and anyway, that's, uh, that's it. So uh, more to come. We'll see you guys on the next video.